Our reading today comes from John chapter 15, verses 4 to 11, the vine and the branches. Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We end the words of our Lord and Saviour. And we thank God for his words and pray his blessing upon us. Let us pray. Loving God, I pray for Joanne as she shares this word with us that you've laid on her heart. I pray that as she speaks them, she will speak them in the power of your spirit. As we hear them, we hear them in the transforming power of your spirit that they speak into our very own lives, that they encourage us, that they draw us closer to you and deeper in our relationship with you. Loving God, I thank you that you are using your servant Joanne today to speak these words to us. And as we are blessed by her words, may she be blessed as you use her as your vessel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi there. Um, For those who know me and know that this is something I find really difficult to do. Um, I don't like a lot of attention um, put on me all at one time um, and therefore find it difficult talking to uh, large groups of people. Um, And especially talking to a camera um, that's in my face at the moment. But this is something I've really found um, on my heart the last couple of weeks. Um, My latest thing to do is I like to listen to podcasts, um, especially driving the car or walking our dog Ernie. And two weeks ago, I was walking um, Ernie and was listening to a podcast by a lady called Priscilla Shariah. Um, She was preaching about um, the reading that we just listened to, John 15 verse 4 was the one that she was concentrating on and it goes like this abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me she mentioned that a few years ago they had a very big drought um, and as she was walking around their community she noticed that her neighbor's pond was the only pond that um, still had water in it um, and as she, she pondered this and spoke to her neighbour, she realised that this neighbour's pond um, had a, it was a spring, and so the water was coming from deep within the earth. She related this to our relationship with God. Um, unless um, we are grounded in Him, unless we abide in Him, um, we struggle in, in, in times of difficulty, in times of drought. Um, that we lose our hope and we lose our joy. In that moment, listening to the podcast, it took me back 10 years to 2011. On this coming Wednesday, it will be the 10 year anniversary of my mom's death. My dad ended up dying 11 months after my mom and they both died from kidney cancer. 
nothing can compare, uh, nothing can prepare you for losing a loved one. I remember, like it was yesterday, um, the day I found out that things were not that great with my mum. Two months before my mum's death, um, I had been taking the girls to their dancing lessons, came home, um, and Rowan told me that my mum needed to go into hospital, um, that her health wasn't great and they needed to do some tests. Um, in the week um, following that, they found a tumour the size of a, a rugby ball on my mum's kidney. Um, and basically gave her to the end of the week to um, survive. <laughs> My world absolutely shattered. Um, moving countries, um, all the things that Rowan and I had to change and go through as a couple. My parents were the constant love and support. When we decided to go into the ministry, they were our um, biggest fans. They were the ones that were behind us, supporting us and mentoring us through this journey that we were taking on. Naturally, as a child who thinks their parents will last forever, I thought my parents um, were never going to die. So moving away from family um, was, was really difficult to do. Um, but the hardest was being away from them when my mom missed health was deteriorating. I was here in Northern Ireland and my parents live in South Africa and I wasn't quite sure whether I would see my mum again. She managed to hang on to me going back, my two siblings going back to Port Elizabeth in South Africa, Christmas, New Year, but then on the 26th of January 2011 she um, breathed her last breath and went to meet Jesus in heaven. It was difficult and um, it was really hard, um, but I knew that somehow there must be a reason for this, that God was somehow working behind the scenes. Um, and even though my heart was breaking, I knew somehow there was some sort of joy and hope um, in the long term um, that we needed to just hang on to. Um, naturally, we were worried about my dad um, as he was losing his spouse. He was on his own in Port Elizabeth. Um, and he seemed to be doing okay, um, um, but as the months went on, he developed a bit of a cough, and the cough never went away, he went for tests. And then in November 2011, almost a year after my mom was diagnosed with cancer, um, he was admitted to hospital and also diagnosed with a tumour on his kidney, and then also that the tumour was cancerous. All the Bible teachings that I've ever heard um, taught of God being loving and caring um, and that um, he looked after us. So I naturally thought, well, God was going to heal my dad um, because how can God, the loving, caring God, take both parents away from me? While we were waiting for um, God to answer our prayers, two weeks after his diagnosis, my dad also died. The last time I saw my mother, I knew that it was the last time I would see her, but no way did I ever think the last time I saw my dad would be the last. Um, I remember the last conversation with my dad, I, I was just too emotional that I just had to hand the phone to my dad because I just couldn't um, talk to him. And that's my last memory of my dad. Um, it absolutely shook my world. Namely, I flew back to South Africa to pack up my dad's and my mom's house to attend the funeral and somehow made it two weeks later back um, here. Um, and then a month after that, Rowan went into the hospital for an operation we thought would take a couple of days for him to heal, but his recovery took a lot longer than we thought. I was back at work, working full time. Um, at that stage, our children were really young, um, so I had to look after them. Um, Rowan was unable to really uh, move about, so I had to make sure that he was set up and, and okay, alongside of grieving for both of my parents. I still remember the lowest moment. I had come home from a very long day at work, um, picked up the girls from the, the childminder and um, arrived at home, still needed to make supper. 
or in, that's, uh, in our terms, that's actually called roti. Um, I had to make meal, um, make sure that Rowan had survived the day, he was okay. Um, I remember walking down into the kitchen ready to make a meal and I just had had enough. I was just so angry with how my life had turned out. Um, and that anger was directed at God. I told God that oh, I just didn't like the, what he was doing. How could he take my parents away from me? Um, and just really was angry. I, I remember there was a, a bit of possibly shouting involved in my conversation with God, but it got to the point where I just didn't want anything to do with God. I told him that I didn't want to talk to him again because I was really, really cross. The thing is that I never thought what happened happened to me. I had been a Christian since I was 13 years old, um, through really difficult times of moving countries, through various other events in my life, I'd always hung on to my faith. And here I was doubting my faith. I found after, um, with, um, I found this book um, by Dr. James Dobson. Um, it's called Holding On To Your Faith Even When God Doesn't Make Sense. He asks his readers to consider the kind of world we would have if God did exactly what we demanded of him. Firstly, Christians would outlive non-Christians. Um, they would never have toothache, kidney stones, any disabilities. Christians' um, businesses would succeed, their houses would be beautiful. Um, enti our entire basis of our relationship with God would be undermined. People will seek a friendship with him in order to gain benefits rather than to respond with the heart of repentance and love. Most importantly, the evidence of God's awesome power would eliminate the need for faith. Quite tough words to think of. It's silly how we blame God for not answering our prayers and trying to shut him out when things go wrong. We do not realise that it does not matter why things are done a certain way. It does not matter whether we understand why things happen a certain way. What matters is that he's there to help us no matter what things go like, no matter how things are. At that moment in the kitchen, I felt like Peter, walking on the water, concentrating on Jesus, but yet the storm around me shifted my focus. The waves were washing up against my ankles, causing me to look down. I was looking at the things around me, of the struggles around me, instead of concentrating on the one who could get me through this. I thought I could get rid of my heartache by getting rid of God. But you see, a funny thing happened in those moments, in those days, in those, that week, following my decision to stop talking to God. He still spoke to me. It was almost like Priscilla's neighbour's pond where her water was coming from deep within the earth. God's water was deep within me. Even though I was not talking to him, he still spoke to me. He spoke words of comfort, of love, of healing, telling me that it was going to be okay, that things will be okay if we do this together. After a while, I actually found that I was talking back to him. And through our conversation, through prayer, healing came. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch bear, cannot bear fruit itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I know there is a lot of similar stories to mine, especially in this last year with COVID-19. Stories of praying for healing, stories of loss, Stories of not understanding what God is doing. I realize, want, I want you to realize that you're not alone. You might feel like I did, that God has forsaken you, caused your pain. 
Maybe you think that you are alone in everything that is going on. Realize that he loves you so much and he's the one that can get you through this. Do not try and run away from God like I did. Dr. Dobson believes um, that there's a reason why some of these old hymns have endured for centuries. It's not about the musical instruments, it's not about whether it's played on organ, electric guitar, or whether there's drums involved. It's about the words, because the words are based on solid truth. God's promise, promises in the old hymns are the same today. There's a hymn called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus and is written by a lady called Helen Howarth Lemel. And it's written in the 1918s, 1918, year 1918. But you can hear the, uh, you can find the, the version, a newer version um, by Hillsong, um, by Lauren Diego on YouTube. Um, and they've just changed a little bit of the, the way it's been presented, but the words are still the same. It tells us to turn our eyes upon Jesus, to look full in his wonderful face. And then the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You might not have a relationship with God. You might feel that you cannot give him your pain and struggle. But God is graceful. He's compassionate. He's waiting for you to reach out and ask him to help you. No matter what you have done, he loves you and wants a relationship with you. Someone once recently told me that how you cope with trauma depends on the support that you get. Do not think that you need to struggle alone. As humans, we think that we just need to get over it, negative re um, emotions, and we'll be fine. But God has made us with happy, joyful emotions and with not so good emotions like sadness and, and grief. In 1 Corinthians 12, it speaks of how if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. It was when I realized that I needed help. It was when I realized that I could be vulnerable with Rome and that he and I could, could walk this journey of grief together. It was when then later in our church cell group we spoke about things and how I, I, I was struggling to deal with um, the loss of my parents that the healing came because then those people around me knew what to pray for, knew how to help me. Do not feel like you need to do it on your own. I'm going to end with a poem um, which I'm sure you're familiar, familiar with called Foot footprints in the sand. One night I had a dream. I dreamt I was walking along the beach with the Lord and across the sky flashed scenes of my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of my life flashed before us, I looked back at the footprints in the sand I noticed that many times along the path of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I also noticed that it happened to be the very lowest and saddest times in my life. This really bothered me. I questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome time in my life, there have only been one set of footprints. I don't understand why I, in times when I needed you the most, you should leave me. The Lord replied, My precious, precious child, I love you. I would never, never leave you during your times of trial and suffering. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was when I carried you. Thank you, Joanne, for sharing that with us. Let us pray. Loving God, as we consider the God that you are, the God whose well runs deep, 
and who, who's, who, whose living water is, is like an eternal spring in us. That we will never run dry. Even when we feel as if we have, we have pulled ourselves away from you, you never leave us. And you are the constant source and supply of joy and life in our lives. That even when we find ourselves walking in the darkest of valleys, even when we find ourselves overwhelmed by the, by the highest of waves around us, you are with us. We give you thanks and praise. And so, God, with that in mind, I lift up to you those who are going through these difficult times right now, who are feeling overwhelmed by all that is happening around them, who are finding it really hard to, to worship you and praise you because life is so hard at the moment that they cannot see any reason to worship or praise you. I pray, God, that they will sense your presence they will know that you have not gone anywhere. That even though they find themselves in the darkest of valleys and the deepest of pits, you sit there with them, with your arm around them. May they hear your reassuring words, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will be with you through all of this. I will bring you through this. I pray those reassuring words, Lord, for every person right now, who finds themselves struggling, whether in a hospital bed or a living room sofa, whether they are sitting in places where decisions need to be made for the good of all people, for the good of this country. Loving God, may they know that you are with them, that you are their strength, that you are their wisdom. I lift them up to you, Lord. I lift up to you the broken. I lift up to you the lonely. I lift up to you those who are sick, those who are dying. Lord, may they know your comfort and your strength in this time. And may they know that the struggles of this life will pass. But there is an eternal life where there is no struggle, where there is no death, there is no mourning, there is no crying, there are no tears. May they know that that is found in you. Loving God, bless those who mourn. Strengthen those who are weak. Comfort those who are lonely. And bring peace to those who are struggling. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I hope that you will join with us next Sunday again. We are going to close with the song that Joanne referred to in her message today. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. And following that song, we will share in the benediction together. God bless. Take care. Goodbye.